Hey, what's up guys? I am super excited about this one today. I got a whole pile of parts for my 2003 WR450. I just picked this bike up a couple of months ago, somewhere in there, and I've started picking away on it. So far I've put on uh, the new Pro Circuit TI4 Titanium. I just pulled that apart and repacked it, so that is good to go. Um, this thing has a brand spanking new 478 Big Bore kit on it, which I have just, uh, finished breaking in and uh, it's time to start jumping into this. I'm just going to take a couple minutes and walk you through uh, the plans for today's video. Uh, first up, I just got this Shinko 505 hybrid gummy cheater tire, whatever you call it, on there. These things get great reviews. Uh, really excited to see what that's going to be like out on the trail. I would say uh, with the limited riding I've done with this bike, my biggest complaint is definitely the gearing. Uh, this bike would have been 1450 sprockets. Uh, from the factory kind of thing. This is 1350, so a bit lower, but not even in the ballpark of uh, the kind of gearing that I'm looking for. So we're going big. We are going to a 52 tooth rear and a 12 tooth front. So that should be a huge difference. I'm really looking for this thing to be basically useless in first gear. Um, I want first to just be for just, you know, slow speed wheelies and super steep, nasty terrain. And uh, I'm for normal riding, I'll probably just click it up in a second and take it off like that. Uh, as I said, just finished breaking in the big bore kit. So I just went and picked up a new filter yesterday. I very recently just started working at a dealership that sells Kawasaki and Husky. So I got some oil from there. Uh, also got a gold DID chain to go on there. Um, I would say in terms of ergonomics on this bike, my biggest complaint is definitely uh, the handlebars feel very low and forward. So we have got these uh, Pro Taper uh, bar adapter things. They go from a 7 8 up to an inch and an eight. That should lift it up, uh, you know, at least half an inch or a bit more there. And then I'm trying a set of these blade uh, bars, these are called the RM High Bend, and uh, they're definitely a little bit taller and wider than the stock ones, which hopefully will be good when I'm standing up. I just, the stock riding position, I, I just, I hate the way the bars are so low like that. So this should uh, hopefully get it into the realm I'm looking for. I uh, picked up just a cheap set of Pro Taper grips, and I got the glue to put those on. And uh, we're just going to jump on in, try and get all this stuff done today so that tomorrow we can head out and do some filming and go for a proper day on the dirt bike. Anyways, let's jump on in, get this thing going. First up, I think we're going to focus on getting that sprocket on. It's just beautiful sunny day outside, so we are going to go and uh, sit out on the deck and swap that thing over. I've also... Uh, I'm using a bucket for a stand right now. Luckily, I had the kickstand out because the bucket started to kind of cave in and I got really lucky that it was able to hold it up. I don't have a proper stand yet and uh, boy, oh boy, did I ever learn my lesson about buckets. So I'd like to get a tire under this thing right away and also I just want to see what this sprocket looks like on there. That thing is so sweet. Hey, how's it going? How you doing today? Okay, good, thanks. All right, so this here is the difference between a 50 and a 52. It's actually not that much bigger. It's definitely a bit there, but uh, I've heard stories of bigger uh, uh, sprockets on the rear kind of getting caught up with rocks and things like that. I don't see this as being a huge concern, but uh, we will see. All right, sprocket is on, everything's all good to go. That thing is looking sweet on there. Should look great with a gold chain. Let's head on in and get back at it. Okay, tire is back on. As I'm going through this project, uh, I'm definitely noticing a couple things that I'm gonna need to come back and redo. I wanted to put some grease on that axle. I just cannot find my grease gun at the moment. I actually have two of them and I used it recently. Um, but like I said, you know, I should probably go in there and give the bearings a good once over. I mean, all this kind of crap's ready for a good cleanup. This rim's a little gross, hub's gross. So uh, we're, we'll get her back into running shape right now. But uh, I really would like to go through this project and clean it up. Um, for those of you who've been following this channel, uh, since I pulled my 12 valve down to a bare frame, 
I really just kind of did too much all at once and uh, I don't want to do that on this bike. I really would like to just take it one project at a time. Next up, this, uh, the next thing I got to deal with is this chain. Uh, this thing does not have a master link on it. Uh, I've gone over it with a fine tooth comb just around and around and around and uh, I talked to my buddy downtown Jeff Brown, who is definitely my uh, motorcycle guru, and uh, he thinks that possibly it fell off, but then uh, just because it's so old, the ends might have gotten peened over. He also said that uh, when he was a kid, his dad would sometimes just uh, uh, hammer the ends over and just kind of peen it on himself. So either way, uh, I'm going to have to cut this thing off. Okay, chain is cut and uh, can be removed now. I don't know why I was dreading that so much. It actually just cut through it like nothing. Piece of cake. Kind of interesting comparing these two tires. On paper, they're both the same size, 120, 118. But I mean, you look at the sidewall on this versus this. I mean, it just seems way bigger. And one of the nice things about that is that you can air it down quite a bit. I'm assuming that's why they do it. Uh, I could be just imagining things. I mean, this one's inflated and has 15 PSI in it right now. I'll probably be running it down at seven or eight or so, but uh, seems uh, a lot taller for sure. So anyways, I am so pumped to try this out. Okay, next up is front sprocket. Let's get this cover off, get that thing out of there and uh, get that 12 tooth installed. One thing I'm actually gonna test right now, I've also purchased a 15 tooth sprocket. And uh, the reason for that is uh, if I go 1252 and um, find that it's just too low for any kind of gravel road cruising, then uh, I could go uh, 1552 and um, uh, be able to, to do that. And as long as I had a second chain, you know, that's a possibility. It's kind of a weird idea. But uh, as I'm looking at this, I mean, this is only a 13 tooth, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 13 tooth. And it looks like it's almost touching right here. Uh, there's not a ton of clearance in there, so I'm not really sure how well a 15 is going to work. Um, I'm going to try it on and just see, but uh, that might have been a waste of time and money. All right, so uh, yeah, I don't think the 15 tooth would work with this chain, the swing arm chain guard thing. I'm gonna have to do a little research. Possibly you gotta remove that or trim it or something. Um, it's not really a huge concern at the moment. I just thought it'd be kind of cool if I could swap it over, but you know, whatever. Well, holy crap, I cannot even begin to tell you how many hours have gone by getting in that chain and the sprockets on there. Definitely a bit of a fight. Um, I was having a hard time uh, getting the thing squared up and I actually called my buddy downtown Jeff Brown for a little advice and discovered, uh, based on what he told me, that these blocks might be different from side to side and they actually are. So what I ended up doing was um, just bottoming these threads out all the way and uh, just counting, you know, you can see the flat spots on the bolt. I would just go one flat spot at a time. So that is all on there and good to go. Uh, this tire is actually really big. Uh, it just barely clears in here, even though they're both 120, 118s, which is kind of interesting. It is a way taller tire though, um, or way bigger sidewall, let's say that. And uh, anyways, uh, it's looking great. I like the uh, blue sprocket and the gold chain. It's pretty subtle, but uh, definitely a nice little detail on there. Um, I actually just remembered that I got to pull this guard back off. I forgot to fold the tabs up on this washer here. So I'm going to do that right now. And then uh, it's probably time to start disassembling the uh, handlebars and getting them new ones on there. And then an oil change and we are ready to go tomorrow. One thing I should mention while I'm here, uh, those of you with a keen eye might notice that I just removed this extremely heavy old uh, kickstand. Uh, weight reduction has been something that I've been pretty interested in. Uh, I've been down, I think about 9.6 pounds right now. This thing has got to be, you know, one to two pounds. This thing with bolts is actually very heavy. Um, you know, my last two dirt bikes was a YZ450F and a YZ125 that I had a long time ago. 
I was out in the bush all the time. They didn't have kickstands and I didn't really care, you know. Um, I'm more interested in performance than convenience, I would say, with this bike. So we are just going to run it without. And uh, if it's a big deal, I can throw them on. But uh, I'm happy to be removing weight from this heavy old bike. Okay, I got the handlebars uh, pulled off. Um, I don't know why I thought these were steel, but I do not believe that they are. They don't seem to be magnetic. Uh, this has got this crossbar thing here. I'm sure you can see that. Um, it's kind of hard to hold these up evenly, but I'm pretty sure that the stock bars are a little bent. Um, you know, they don't seem to really line up. I don't know. I did not notice them being bent when I was riding on them. I'm sure this thing's been wiped out a million times though, but, uh, anyways, time to start, uh, putting on these other ones. Um, I hope that all the little brackets and stuff like that line up, but let's just jump on in and find out. Also, you might notice that the uh, bike seems to be sitting up miraculously. Uh, two seconds after pulling off the kickstand, I realized it might be nice to have it on for changing the handlebars. Obviously, my uh, love-hate relationship with kickstands continues. Um, either way, that thing will definitely be coming right back off as soon as the bars are on. Okay, and the bars are on. A um, lot of fiddling, just going over and over and over, getting everything just the way I wanted it. Uh, the grips, unfortunately, didn't go that well. This is the first time I've put grips on before, and I didn't know that there was a, a throttle side and a clutch side. It definitely makes sense. I had bought this grip glue stuff, but, you know, after putting it on one side and... Uh, Having it be too loose and then trying to fight the other one on there, it just had kind of dried and stuff like that. So they're not really seated that well. Unfortunately, uh, I'm definitely gonna have to pull those back off again. Uh, this one is pretty good. It's got a couple of little loose spots in there. So regardless, I got these grips for super cheap. Uh, it's one of the benefits of working at a store that sells dirt bike stuff. So if I have to do it again, no big deal. Um, but I will just go ahead and give it a try for now. Anyways, uh, a lot of stuff today took way longer than I expected. Um, you know, just wrestling my way through this bike. It's been a long time since I worked on dirt bikes and they've definitely got some quirks. So, uh, anyways, though, um, I think we're going to leave that here for now. I'm going riding tomorrow. I'm going to get up early and do the oil change and stuff like that, but that's not really anything too exciting to watch. So, uh, just want to say thanks a lot for coming along on this. Um, you know, the tire looks great on there, uh, chain and sprockets, uh, should make a really big difference. I mean, overall, the experience of riding this bike should be changed pretty dramatically after today's upgrades and, uh, really excited to check it out. So make sure and subscribe and, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Anyways, just want to say thank you so much for coming along on this. Um, like I said, I will be putting, uh, the new rad shrouds on probably next week. Uh, I just cannot look at those things anymore. Uh, the front fender is a little beat up. It's not the end of the world. The rear, again, a little beat up, not the end of the world, but those things are gross. Anyways, folks, thanks for coming along. Please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.